I'm Mr. O, here with another oh, yeah! moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. On a prior Oh Wow Moment episode, we looked at singing glasses in a phenomenon called sympathetic resonance, where one singing glass could make a second vibrate. I neglected another interesting thing you can do. Let's get experimenting! Before we begin, remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous, so always have a responsible adult helping you. We're working with glass today, so make sure to be extra careful with it, and if any should crack or break, immediately get an adult to help clean it all up. Now, wine glasses work best, but just about any stemware will do the trick. Finally, crystal makes fantastic sound, but Glass is a lot less expensive and a lot less likely to break, so I'd stick with that if I were you. And most importantly, get your parents' permission before doing this, especially in a restaurant. To make a glass sing, rub your finger on the rim of the glass. The reason you hear the tone is because of vibrations in the glass. When I run my finger along the edge of the glass, my finger first pulls on the glass, warping it so slightly that you can't really see it. Then my finger slips free, allowing the glass to return to its original shape. This stick slip occurs hundreds of times very quickly, causing vibrations. If you look closely at the water while the glass is making noise, you can see waves inside the water. That's a result of the vibrations. What we didn't mention last time is you can make different notes by changing the amount of water in the glass. For example, if we take some water out of the glass and run your finger on the rim, it makes a higher tone. But if we add in more water and run your finger on the limb, it makes a lower tone. Why? Well, you may recall from when we've talked about sound before that sound travels in waves, sound waves. Sound waves are a kind of wave called compression waves. As the energy created by sound travels through the air, the molecules in the air compress or squeeze closer together, then spread back apart. If we sketch it out, it looks something like this. The distance between compressions is the wavelength. How long or short that wavelength is determines the tone. For example, this shorter tuning fork creates a high tone because the short tines on the fork create short sound waves. Not much distance between the compressions. But when we strike this tuning fork, it creates a lower tone because the long tines on the fork create long sound waves, a further distance between compressions. If we apply this back to the singing glass, the full glass has less air. So the area of the glass vibrating in water is larger, creating longer sound waves and a lower tone. But if we empty the glass again, the more empty glass has less water and more air. Therefore, the area of the glass vibrating only in water is smaller, creating shorter sound waves and a higher tone. So you can get a whole bunch of glasses, fill them to different levels, and create a sort of water glass instrument that you can actually play songs on. The key is to always make sure to get your parents' permission first. What are you doing with our stemware? Also make sure to get your wife's permission first. This has been another Oh Wow Moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play.